were actually from her sister Matilda. How much do you um, think she was charging? I mean, how much was she paying for the quilts? You think? Forty dollars. Did you say forty? Yeah. Forty dollars. Yep. Amazing. Yep. And um, so they, they're just beautiful, but you know they were cotton seed batting because they were in the south, and so mm-hmm. you definitely can't um, put them through a washing machine because the cotton seed batting gathers all that and gets heavy, and you can't even lift it. Really? Um, she when me a quilt when my husband and I were first married, and we've been married thirty five years, and I you know I knew about quilts and I understood about that, but. Oh, we were in Texas and I accidentally washed one and oh, oh, it was awful to get that, the water out and oh, nearly lost that quilt. So tell me I a should... little bit more about cotton seed batting. I don't know about that. Tell me a little bit more. Um, it's when you pick the cotton ball and then you run it flat, a lot of times they don't pick out the seeds on that because it's just going to go into a quilt and you won't see it anyway. So they take it and they make it like a, a flat, you know, like the battings of today, but they're, it's more loosely um, pressed together. And then you get to see the cotton seeds in there. And so that's cool. with that, they would, yeah, it, it's a very natural product and but it doesn't hold very well. So after 40 years, you can see where the bunches are, where, you know, it's slipped on the, it's slipped on the bed and, you know, people have bunched it up and (laughs) it's bunches and bulges and stuff like that. But they were just beautiful. I could just see the different dresses that people had, you know, worn and cut up and, you know, pieced together for it. So that's really cool. Love it totally love it well I would love to see if you have photos or anything I'd love to see those and um, what happens with this is I'm going to make a web page for you of your story and so any images that you want to send um, to add to that page would be so awesome um, that sort of the things that we've talked about so we can sort of imagine so we can not only have to imagine it but actually see some of the things you're talking about um, I'll get my daughter because they're still up in Nebraska and oh, cool. I'll have her take the pictures and I'll, she can send them to me and then I'll send them to you. Cool. All right. So another question I have is sort of when you're choosing a pattern for these projects, how do you decide what pattern you're using? Where do you get the patterns from? Do you use like you were talking about um, uh, a pinwheel and a uh, bear claw? So these are really standard um types of blocks but where do you get the patterns from from the stuff you guys are making we have a big stack of years and years of old quilting magazines and the ones i i just you know ripped them up and i found the ones that i wanted to do and i said here's the quilts here's the quilts i dream about quilting and when i get time i'll do them so i put them in three ring binders. Well, (laughs) I just kept buying those magazines and (laughs) having a lot of dreams. Uh (laughs) I have like eight binders full of all these patterns now. (laughs) That's so great. So So I leaf through there and, you know, I kind of have, you know, put them together as this is a diamond shape or or this is a four square or Uh this is a spider and um and or a lot of times we'll do something at boys town we did a disappearing four patch that was simple and we could do together as a group because to find a pattern that 20 people can do together is sometimes kind of hard so um we have somebody like in charge of one pattern and then she has the stuff cut up and then we just sit down and she gives us the instructions and we sew it up so we can get a top done in a day now do you also together when that happens like are you taking things so sometimes people just have these really cool patterns you there am i what i said we lost you for just a second i was saying when you when you're doing i have a couple questions on that first are you guys all sewing together are you bringing your sewing machines and sewing together yes awesome 
And then um, what about varying levels? So are there certain people that are beginners and more advanced people or are you all about the same level? Nope, there is there is a great stretch of us that are intermediate quilters. And, but we always have beginners too, but we've learned that the very simplest of patterns are the easiest to sew because sometimes from machine to machine, even that quarter inch can vary oh. on how a machine goes. Uh -huh. So we pick the very simplest, that straight lines that, you know, if somebody dropped in that was a beginning filter, they could sure pick it up and do it. Or there's also some people that, you know, may, they might be tired of sewing, so they said, oh, I will iron. And, you know, that is welcome news to us because it's like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> because, uh, you know, ironing can get kind of boring, but it's so necessary mm -hmm. in, in order to, you know, set your stitch and keep your block on track for how big the size is and you know, pressing is a necessity in quilting. And so we just welcome those people with open arms and just give them all kinds of praise and thanks. For <laughs> That's great. Do you, um, so when, when the machines vary, are you concerned about things matching or how worried are you about, you were talking about your mom being super precise. When you're group, quilting as a community, how do you, how does that, how do you deal with that? Like, imperfection yeah like the first time we kind of noticed it because we all sat down on our machines and we did the quarter inch that our machine did and then with the next step when we had to put blocks together we kind of went wow this doesn't fit or this doesn't match what's going on didn't you sew a quarter inch and <laughs> yes I did and so a lot of blaming then, then what we did was um we go with a ruler and we mark each one of our machines with that quarter inch from that ruler Interesting. so that we all are doing the same quarter inch so we'll just take tape and you know mark it down so yeah. that we all have the same quarter inch because if everybody is off that can get up to be you oh, know two to three inches of mayhem yeah and it de would be depressing because you'd work so hard yeah. and then it'd be like struggling Yes. That's really interesting. Well, I'm amazed that the machines are so different. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, we were too. It was it was truly wow. <laughs> You'd think a quarter inch is a quarter inch, but, you know, where does that fall, you know, in that little circle of where your machine needle goes up and down and, you know, yeah. some you machines you can move the needle across and so, you know, yeah. that makes it a little bit different and so oh, yeah. Do you think it matters what kind of machine you have for quilting? Do you think a fancy machine matters or any machine? Does it make a difference since you've seen so many machines cut through the through the years? Um, I would say the machine that you love with all your heart, that it's a joy to sit down and sew with. Yeah. That's the machine that's the that's a good one. That's funny. I, I agree. It's kind of a little bit of it's a romance in some way, right? <laughs> Yes, most definitely. Yeah. I had a lady that loved her Kenmore and just sewed on it for years and years and years. And she wore it out because she was a prolific quilter. And that just broke her heart. And so she had to find a new, she found a new Kenmore and she said, but it just isn't the same. So then she went out and was looking for, you know, she kept that Kenmore, but looked for another one. And she found that she liked a Fa. Mm -hmm. And so that one, that was the next one. And my aunt had a, a an old Necky, and she loved that. And she sewed the heck out of that one, too. And Necky kind of changed their, how they put machines together in about the 80s and 90s. And so she didn't like the new machines that came out. But they changed how they put their machine together again. And so she likes it. Necky is back in the stores, and she has one again, and she likes it. I found out I really do like a Bernina just because it's very durable. It's it'll take heavy weight things and just you know just keep moving along. Yeah. 
Yeah, my, that's what my mom. My mom was a Benin. She loved Bernina. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and what kind of sewing machines do you see most in your group? Do you see a trend? Um, when we first started out, it was Bernina. You know, but they were heavy. And as the women got older, mm -hmm. they didn't want to transport and lift heavy machine, you know, heavy yeah. or sewing machines. Yeah. So then they went to preferred Janome. Huh. Mm -hmm. And yeah. but now FOF has kind of caught that market trend and they have a really nice, nice portable sewing machine too that's really sturdy and trustworthy. Interesting. So kind of of how the, the quilting companies and the machine companies listen to their um, clientele is what machine will, you know, work or not work. How important, now that we're into like kind of that side of it, how important are tools or stencils or other, all, there's so much of that on the market now. Um, how much is that, how much of that stuff do you guys use? The basting sprays, the... I mean, you name it, there's something there. Um, how important are, it, are is that to the, the special rulers, all of that, to what you do? Um, we don't go for the special stuff. I mean, we love the, oh, what is it? There's one ruler that's like 24 inches by 6 inches. Mm-hmm. And that's nice for cutting those longer, um, you know, 2 inch strips. Yeah. I have one of those, they're great. Yep. And if you have to do a lot of square things, you know, a nice six inch or nine inch square block would be good. Yeah. Um, we just kind of keep it really simple. Um, the most that people do is kind of go off on applique. Yeah. In what way? Yeah. Our hundred year quilt is mostly applique and that took well, a lot of work and a lot of time, but boy, it looks great. It's yeah. beautiful. Is it needle turned? Is that what you guys did? Yes. And how did you do the applique? Did you use like AccuQuilt or some other? Did you? How did you cut out the the shapes? The ladies drafted them themselves. Really? They we took pictures from the historical, so, so, you know, the historical uh, pictures of Boys Town from the Hall of History, and we had a woman from Papillion kind of give us what it should look like in a queen size, and you know, the proportions, mm -hmm. and then we went from there and kind of picked and chose what we saw from the pictures. They drafted their own patterns. Amazing. Yes, it is amazing and beautiful, because we did the barn that, you know, the Boys Town barn. We did Dowd Chapel, which is the um, main chapel on campus. Um, we did the Bo Boys Town like signs on the poles and um, the obelisk that's at the uh, front of Boys Town now. And just kind of, it was on a path. And so we saw, you know, how kids and Boys Town changed through the hundred years. You know, we had the traditional look of the little newsies at the bottom and somebody did those in wool and then you know someone else when they got to the middle there were the you know 30s and 40s kids with their suitcases coming in and then we up to the top we had a boy and a girl walking on the path because you know since 1979 Boys Town has done girls or accepted girls also so a lot awesome. of a lot of work, but they drafted it all themselves. And, you know, one of them, we even went out to see the church and she, you know, looked at all the architecture features that were on there and did a little bit of, uh, you know, paint cast on it just yeah. to make sure that the shadows were fall falling right. And Are you they're very quilters. <laughs> That's amazing. Are you amazed at sort of the level of creativity? Like what I'm amazed at with this project is how creative. There are so many people that are so creative. Do you feel like that's just like part of who we are as human beings is this sort of need to create? Or sort of, you know, how do we explain, like, you know, how do we explain sort of this outpouring of creativity? I would say 
the need to create and the need to have beauty around you. Mm -hmm. There's something just beautiful.